Hi, welcome to another adventure with Weaver Stonehouse Farm. Today we are in the garden again. Uh, it's where we spend most of our time this time of year. And I just want to show you what we have growing and what will be coming up in the next couple months. Okay, so on the far edge is our strawberry patch. Those are done for the season. Um, we are going to expand our strawberry production and double it for next year. We're going to double it. Okay. So I have strawberry starts if you want, you know, to buy your own strawberry plants. Okay. Um, beside that, we have our tobacco growing. And then this whole section is beans. There's a mix of black beans and the traditional green beans. Wait, so I'm pointing with my fingers here. That is all beans. Now, how many rows is that down through there? Um, I Four, five, five or six? Back, maybe five. I'm thinking pushing six. Okay. My, my help is, you know, kind of young, and so we just plant. Okay, now one, we have two, three, black beans on the four, end. Five, six. Yeah, it's like six. We have green beans, and we also have a um, tricolor mix mixed in there. Like you can see these here. Which ones? Those the purple? Are purple ones. Okay. So Beautiful purple flowers. And the yellow wax and the green all mixed in on this top part. Now, green and the traditional yellow wax. Okay. Mixed together. Now, unfortunately, the purple beans don't hold their color once they're cooked. Oh. But they're awesome to eat raw because you're eating a purple bean. Sweet. Now, down farther here, we have dragon tongue beans. We run all of our garden on drip irrigation. Um, we separate into two zones this year, so we can kind of tailor it to what we need. Um, like the bottom zone, the tomatoes aren't as picky as some of the other plants. So we kind of monitor the rainfall. To so, sure two, the okay, we, sp we split it this year because we're like 180 foot long. Yeah. So in the middle, what we did, we'll show you down here, we split this in the middle. So that half has its own feed. And this top half up here, you can see that line here, and it's Toro drip tape. It has its own feed. Now, something we learned with this is you want to make sure that you've got a little bit of cover. Or it's encroach. The weeds are going to encroach on the edge. And you want to see how I cu we cut this in. Otherwise, the weeds, you just lose it. So we buy all of our drip supplies and garden supplies at Laverne's Produce in Martinsburg. They're great. This is a simple system to hook up. I would, I tell people all the time, this is great for your home garden because you don't have to worry about watering by hand. You can put it on a timer. Sprinkles, for sprinklers on, yep. We have it on a timer to go early in the morning and we don't have to worry about it. We have corn coming within the month. We have um, three different plantings of corn. Hold on, let me get a shot of the corn here. We got half a garden of corn. <laughs> we do. We doubled this year again, didn't we? Uh, not quite double, but close. 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 So we expanded that. Um, this middle section is kind of, you know, just our fancy, whatever we wanted to grow. We have some sunflowers. Now, I didn't know this, and I learned this year, that you don't want to do too many sunflowers in your main garden space. Oh. Because there's a compound in the sunflower. What's it do? That hurts the plants, that inhibits growth. Really? Yes. Yeah, so we have just a few sunflowers. They're my favorites. And if you come with me down here, we have pumpkins, and we have some flowers mixed in. The cosmos are great down here for drawing in pollinators. The four o'clocks, these go crazy with flowers and blossoms. I, and, well, come fall, when we, these are these are a bear to pull out come fall. <laughs> they are, they, they self-seed readily. Yeah. Um, so we have a variety of pumpkins in here. Wait, so pumpkins. Pumpkins. Okay. These are some cucumelons that we tried this year. The Wait, Mexican I'm stuck gherkins. looking at the beans. Okay, you're still looking at the beans. Over there's a small row of carrots. We need to put some more in this week for a fall crop. Okay. Um, and I'll show you some neat tricks on getting your carrots to germinate in the summer too. So these are cucumelons that need trellis. What the heck is a cucumelon? It's a little, they're Mexican sour gherkins. They're kind of like a cross between a fruit and a cucumber. And they make little watermelon looking circular, you know, fruit that, you know, are pretty tasty. Okay. So, okay, so these are pumpkins. We have some pumpkins on. Um, Wait, and the corn is no spray. The corn is no spray. Now it, it gets a little bit tough because we got to get in there and we hand weed around, but yes. sometimes we do, sometimes we don't get all of it right. Um, but it's no spray. Um, we had a friend that talked to dozens of farmers. 20, she she 24. To 20 trying to find somebody that has no spray corn is what she was after and she couldn't find it everyone said oh this one try this one try this guy you know this guy does it like that and no one did so you know it's small batch we don't have a ton because on this scale it's hard to do it yeah you know in the tarps but um we will have corn coming in about a month no spray no spray okay so now this is all of our broccoli and cauliflower and brussels sprouts and we're dealing with um 
aphid damage right now. So we've been dusting them with diametaceous earth. Oh, that's that white stuff And over neem there. oil as needed on the really bad ones. Neem so, oil. What's neem oil? It's like a natural pesticide. Okay. It's organic certified, so we're good to go. And we could actually also use the tobacco leaves, too. We could. We could. We could soak them. them. And spray with that, too. Okay. We also have ladybugs coming this week. I ordered ladybugs to try to combat the aphids, which I'm really excited about. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> okay, so we got some broccoli ready to harvest. Okay, this is a mess here. Wait, but where's the broccoli? It's down here a little bit. I smell it. Is yeah, it this right are, here? These are the broccoli. These are the broccoli. Um, we've harvested some, but we're still getting some ah, little see, side there. shoots off of them. There's a little head here starting. Okay. So we've got the catnip, which is a popular spot in the garden with the cat. Yep. Okay, over here we have some herbs and lettuce. The yellow flowers are calendula, which I make into a salve. Um, we have chamomile. And that's Jess's magic salve. Yes. Okay. We have thyme. Can this is chamomile stuff I'm looking at here, right? Yes. That's chamomile. Okay. We have some onions through here that need weeded out. Um, yeah, we didn't do that many onions. Even though this year. we have the ground cover down, we still spend time weeding. It's just not as much as if we had to. You know, clear the whole space, but we still spend time weeding. Okay, now these are the dragon tongue beans. They're like a pale yellow bean with like purple spots. They are awesome to eat raw. I love them in salads. Um, and then we are into more herbs. We have basil, and our lettuce has started to. Bolt. If you need basil, right? We got we have basil. A ton of basil. I've been making pesto all week. So if you need so. basil, basil pesto, hit hit me up or hit Jess up. Yep. Brussels what? Sprouts. That's kale. This is kale. There's kale. Okay. Purple kale. Purple kale. Okay, let's make our way down. Now, once again, you'll see flowers sprinkled throughout the garden because they help repel bugs. Well, what this wasn't. This that is. was a that is a lettuce plant that bolted when it got too hot for it. It sends up the buds, and so we're gonna let that go to flower and harvest the seed from it. So we'll get the seed and the lettuce. Yes. Which they're beautiful flowers, honestly. Lettuce has a beautiful flower to it. Okay, so we got more. We're in the tomato section. My tomatoes. Got there's away more. From wait, me. wait. There's more basil. There's more basil. That's tomatoes. Yeah, the tomatoes got away from me this year, so they're not as tidy as I would like. But um, we still have tomatoes. Now, what did we learn? We're gonna we're gonna space them out a little more. Yes, we need more space, and we need to stake them earlier in the season. Okay. So. Um, Okay, in here we have cabbage. Oh, flowers. What are these? Um, those are zinnias. Zinnias. Yes. Okay. Okay, we have peppers mixed in here. I think we have five different varieties of peppers this year, maybe what? six. So, it's all the ones I saw in the, in the kitchen. Yeah, okay. we have jalapenos and banana peppers and green peppers and um, poblano peppers and I think two other varieties so okay. they're doing really well this year this is my first year starting our pepper plants from seed I was a little bit intimidated but we just got a heat mat because they like it nice and warm to start and they are looking great you know it's July and we have peppers which is awesome okay oh wow cabbage, cabbage. I can pick that one out <laughs> okay, over on this end, um, we have watermelon up there and okay. then we're into cucumbers up there oh the watermelons up there. The watermelon, it's, it's a kind of cool plant, you know, it looks, it looks fun. Yeah. Okay, so we have cucumber starting, um, and then we're into zucchini and squash, and down here are some winter squash. Okay, which one's winter squash? At the end. Okay, what's this? This um, is a Brussels, Brussels sprout. sprout. You can see yep. the little sprout starting to form, like in the little armpit of the plant there. Right there, that's a Brussels sprout. Yep. So this will grow tall and they'll grow on a stalk. So when you get your Brussels sprouts, you have to pop them off the stalk. Okay, over here we have onions. And on the far side, we have um, cilantro and dill. Ah, and cilantro. And I'm um, Tulsi. And... Okay, here's some peppers. Yeah. Okay. Look at this guy. We got... got a purple pepper. Nice. So... So we, yeah, we spent the, you know, some time going around and picking off the Japanese beetles because they're attacking the beans and just working in the garden here. I have to prune some tomatoes and work on those, but, you know. Hey, what else did we put in here at the bottom? It's kind of... Okay, at the bottom. Yeah, explain now. How, why, why and how did we do that? 
Okay, we added this cloth um, here. So this, can't, this really amounted to the, it took up the slack of the extra that we had left on the bottom. Yes. And the extra that we had left up the top. This is the slack. Now it's covering 16 foot of tarp wide. So we have corn over there. And this spot is blank because that's where the dog goes. Ah, uh, we tie the dog here. Okay. And then we have some herbs here. We have echinacea and rosemary because I didn't have room in my perennial bed. So they just went in here for the summer and this fall we'll transplant them out to you know, a more permanent spot. Sweet. Okay. Well, hey. Like and subscribe and follow along and see all the hard work that my wife and my daughters do in the garden. Um, I just I do the tilling and help with the tarps, but when it comes to the garden work, they do the majority of it. <laughs> so hey, we'll see you next time on the farm, in the garden, over here and over there and everywhere. Thanks. Bye.